Well, folks, it be like that sometimes. Uh, the Caps lose four to one against the. Oh, I almost said the Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> Caps lose four to one against the New York Rangers. Why did that feel like losing to the Pittsburgh Penguins? I don't know. And before we go any further with this video, the first thing that has to be said is Caps fans, forget about this game. Leave it behind. Don't even think about it. The only reason I have to think about it right now is because I have to make this video. But outside of that, just drop it. Don't even just pretend it didn't happen. This game was an anomaly. This was not our Caps team out on that ice night. They did not even play close to the somewhat type of hockey that we know they should be playing and that they have established for themselves that they should be playing. I think the NBC Sports Washington broadcast put it perfectly. The Caps are not a fleet footed team. They are a heavy hitting, grind them down team. They are a puck battle winning, traffic in front of the crease kind of team. And if you're not winning puck battles and you're not winning crease battles off of point shots, you're not gonna win a hockey game. And that's exactly what happens in this hockey game. They won no puck battles. They had zero presence in the crease. They didn't give Shusurkin any sort of trouble or pressure or any reason to panic. He was on his game and he made all the saves that he need to. But outside of the Caps not playing their heavy hitting, physical, crease presence game, there was other issues, namely defensive breakdowns in front of Vitek Vanacek. Bonus points to anybody who can tell me the common denominator between the first three Ranger goals today. It's really not that hard to see. All you have to do is watch the replay. It's plain as day right in front of you. What is similar between this? Pete Strong on the Panarin, save, rebound, score! This? Panarin, who Lafreniere was open, here he is, he scores! And this. The point. Long shot, they score! I'll give you five seconds. Time's up, did you get it? There is a Rangers player all alone in the crease on every single one of these goals. That cannot happen. That is a defensive breakdown right there. That is somebody missing their assignment or getting caught up high in the zone and not being able to get back and cover their man. First goal, hard point shot by Panarin. Kreider is all alone in front of the net. Vanacek goes down making the save, a good save I might add, but the rebound comes right to Kreider who isn't marked, he's able to throw it into an empty net. Rangers go up one nothing. Goal number two. Oh look, Artemi Panarin once again has the puck and the Caps left the 2020 first overall pick alone in front of Vanacek. Panarin sends a zipline pass right down to the crease and Lafreniere, who is a first round overall pick for a reason, has some silky hands in front of the net. He's able to put it in past Vanacek. Rangers go up 2-0. And it's at this point in the game that I'm not panicking quite yet because there's still a way for the Caps to get back into this. They haven't been playing great hockey up until that point, but there's still time. There's still a chance that the Caps could flip a switch and just start playing their game all of a sudden. Well, Brad, you know what that whole having hope thing does to you and it's not too good because just a minute later, it's a point shot from Strom. There's a lot of bodies in front and one of those bodies is an unmarked Chris Kreider who is standing right in front of Vanacek who can't see a thing. Point shot goes in clean. Rangers go up 3-0. And that was the point that I sort of gave up on hope in this game. But then as hope always loves to do to me, making me look stupid, 38 seconds later, Orloff, where does that come from? It's not enough to take back everything I've said about Orloff this season, but it's a start. This goal is 100% Orloff. In effort to keep the puck in the zone, Nick Jensen just floats the puck off to an off wing. And Orloff is like a hound dog just hunting after it. He gets to the half board first and he wins a puck battle. And this is the pivotal point of the goal. He wins that puck battle. And that's about the only puck battle that was won for the Caps this game. Just moving his feet and grinding away. He wins the puck. He walks it in and he takes a sweet shot from the right side of Shashurkin. He beats him seven hole, far side, and the Caps get on the board. It's three to one. And then all of a sudden, the light turned on for the Caps. The last two minutes of the second period, the Caps were like, oh, hey, we know how to play hockey. And I'm getting excited again because there it is. There was the light bulb that we've been waiting to turn on this entire game. The Caps are gonna come out swinging in the third period and they're gonna tie it up and it's gonna be a close game. Oh, the only problem is somebody forgot to tell the Caps that. The Caps have a dud of a third period and then because of Peter Laviolette's extremely liberal goalie management, I, 
I don't think I'm ever going to understand what goes through PL's brain when he decides to pull a goalie. Anyway, because of his goalie management, it becomes 4-1 on a power play for the Caps. Okay, we're gonna talk about this for a second. Why are you going to pull your goalie with three and a half minutes left in a two goal game and you are on a power play? Yes, I understand you're going to have to pull your goalie at some point, you're down by two goals. Math is hard for me, but not that hard. But there's three and a half minutes left in the game. This ain't football. We don't stop playing with minutes left in the game. Plus you're on a power play. They can take free shots at the net. It's a shooting gallery at the net at that point if you pull your goalie. How about just trusting that your power play is going to score in the next minute and a half and then look, it's two minutes to make up one goal instead of two minutes to make up two goals. Whatever, Rangers score the empty net goal. It's a four to one game and at that point, you're done. But before I get any more frustrated, I'm gonna call back to what I said at the beginning of this video. This has to be forgotten right now. The Caps play again tomorrow and they play New Jersey, an extremely underrated team right now because they are hot even though their position in the standings don't say that they're hot. So folks, just right click this game and delete it. Throw it into the recycling bin of your mind and forget it even happened. That was not our Caps team out on the ice today. We have to believe that our team will show up tomorrow and every game thereafter playing the way that we know that they can play. But what do I know? I'm just a fan. Hey, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button for me. It goes a long way towards helping the channel. And if you enjoyed your time here, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to see you come back. And as always, let's go Caps!